Hello, welcome back to the channel. Um, behind me I have my Karstein um, infrared heating panel and with energy uh, bills rising at the moment many people are looking at alternative ways of heating their home. So in today's science video I'm going to be looking at how this works and how it compares to a conventional radiator and what are the pros and cons of it. To understand how one of these heating panels works uh, we have to talk about the physics and the three methods of heat transfer. As part of this video I'm not going to talk about evaporative cooling, um, that's something uh, separate, but those three methods of heat transfer are conduction, convection and radiation. So if you think back to your school days you would have covered these uh, as part of your science O levels or GCSEs. But just to briefly recap, Conduction usually occurs in solids, and a good example of it is a saucepan on a hob. So you apply heat or form of energy to the base of your saucepan, and what happens is that that heat energy is transferred to the atoms in the base of your saucepan. They'll then start vibrating and passing that energy to its neighbouring atoms, and then that continues until the whole saucepan heats up. So that's why, even though you're heating the base of the saucepan, the edge of the rim of the pan can also get hot as well. Um, conduction relies heavily on the material that you're trying to heat up. Things like wood or plastic are known as insulators and heat conduction through them is generally quite poor, hence why you have things like wooden or plastic handles on saucepans so you don't burn your hands. Um, the second method is convection and you'll often hear the term convection spirals. So this takes place in liquids and gases and it relies on the phenomenon of when you heat up uh, an atom it becomes less dense therefore rises and so the energy goes up it uh, reacts with other uh, molecules in the air or the liquid passes on its heat cools back down drops back down and then heats back up and you end up with this general convection spiral going on um, and then the final method is uh, radiation and this is going to be very important for how the, our infrared heater works. So this involves um, when you apply energy to a um, atom or molecule, um, you increase the energy of the subatomic particles, such as the electrons. They might rise up to what's known as a higher state or jump up to a higher um, electron shell. And when they drop back down, they emit electromagnetic radiation. In some cases, this can be in the visible spectrum, known as light, um, which is between 400 and 700 nanometer wavelengths. Um, it may be in the ultraviolet, which has shorter wavelengths, but quite often it'll be in the infrared, which has wavelengths which are greater than 700 nanometers, so it's beyond the range that we can see. Um, and these electromagnetic waves can uh, propagate out, and when they come into contact with another atom or molecule, that energy is then passed through them to that molecule and heats it up. So infrared rays, such as, uh, the same as all electromagnetic radiation on the, inf uh, in, on the electromagnetic spectrum, uh, can travel through vacuum. And that's how heat gets from our sun to our planet. It's via these light uh, and infrared rays and also UV rays as well. So those are the three methods of heat transfer. Um, and any heating technology uses all three of these methods, but the different technologies predominantly use one of those methods above the other two. So if we think about a conventional radiator, what happens is that hot water gets pumped into that radiator. That water comes into contact with the metal casing of the radiator and the heat is conducted into that metal, that metal then transfers the heat to the whole surface of the radiator, and via, so this is conduction. The air molecules around the radiator then are in contact with that uh, sheet of metal which is now hot, and the heat gets transferred to those air molecules, and then this is really how the room heats up, it's via convection, because those uh, Molecules have been warmed up, now rise up to the ceiling, transmit the heat, cool back down and spiral around and it transfers the heat around the room. The radiator as well, or conventional radiator, will also emit some infrared as well because it's hot and 
it will be emitting heat via infrared as well. So that's how a standard uh, radiator works. You may also see something like a fan heater that works on the same principle. You have something which is a hot surface, um, uh, which is heating up the air around it. But you also have a fan which then blows that hot air away from the heating source into the room and it heats up the and it sort of breaks the convection spiral a little bit. It still does form convection spirals, but they're sort of mini ones that go around the room and that's how the room heats up. So there are problems with this form of heating. First of all, um, if you're in a sealed room, what will happen is the heat will rise up to the ceiling so the way the air at the ceiling is will be warmer than at the ground level and we tend to live on the ground level of a room not in the ceiling so you get a bit of wasted heat there to heat in um, a volume which is no not actually needed um, if the room isn't sealed such as windows or a fireplace with a chimney that a hot air will rise and actually transfer out of the room as well so it's not the most efficient way of heating but it is a cheap way of heating. So this has led to these infrared heating panels like the one that I showed you earlier. And the way this works, it is, relies on infrared radiation to heat the room or heat objects within the room is probably a better way of thinking about this. So what the heating panel does, it emits infrared radiation. That radiation then hits objects within the room and the heat is transferred directly to that object. So you're not heating the air around it. Those objects then warm up and then can emit heat either by radiation or by convection in their own way. So the advantage of these heating panels is that you get almost instant heat. So as soon as you go into a room where one is, you feel those infrared rays hit, hit, uh, hitting you and heating and warming you up. It also means that any objects in the room are absorbing those infrared rays and also then heating up and those can then re-emit that heat either as infrared radiation or more likely via conduction so it'll transfer the heat around those objects and also then heat the air around it. So that's the theory behind them. The problem is, is what uh, range are those waves effective on? over. So one of the problems with infrared radiation is that close to the source you'll feel a lot of heat coming off. There's a lot of energy transfer there because more rays are hitting you. But what you have to think about is those rays are basically radiating out in a form of a sphere and therefore it follows something called an inverse square law which means that if you double the distance from the source the amount of rays that are actually hit in the same area have gone down by a quarter. So you're getting a quarter of the intensity of the heat hitting you. So it um, doesn't over long distances, the heat drops off massively. Well, even if you double it, it drops by a quarter. If you triple it, it drops by a ninth and you can see the pattern that occurs here. So they only work over very short range, which in a usual house where rooms are probably a maximum of about four meters, it works reasonably well. However, it's not great for warming big halls and things like that, unless what you are trying to heat or the people you're trying to heat are within that sort of four metres of the heating panel. So finally, how do these heating panels actually make uh, infrared rays? So there's, num there's a huge number of methods of producing infrared rays, um, and I haven't taken my panel apart to see how it actually works, so I'm speculating a bit here. But if it was me as an engineer and scientist, the way I would do it is by using a ceramic with a heating coil inside. So if you have a loop of resistive wire which heats up and you embed that in a ceramic plate, what happens is the heat will conduct from that heating wire into the ceramic plate and heat up the ceramic plate. If you choose the right sort of ceramic, what will happen is those electrons in that ceramic plate will rise up and then drop back down, and as they drop down will emit the infrared rays. So that's the method that I think that uh, my heating panel is probably using. Anyway, I hope you found that video informative. Um, in our next video, I will actually look at how an air source heat pump works, as those, again, are very popular methods of warming houses, especially in Scandinavian countries. And so we're going to see if they are actually are applicable and if the government grants are worthwhile. Anyway, thank you for watching. Please subscribe, and I'll see you in another video very soon.